interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM408. Hope beyond hope. Cricketude Busting. What am I even saying here? Cricketude Busting. Some of you are. Some of you are stepping up. Thank you for uh, responding as well to the emails in last week and to go into the suggestion to Ice Age Farmer. Now, and our feedback is that there's, a, you know, as anything new, there's a little bit of uh, hesitation here and there that needs to be worked up. But the main main thrust of last week and what we need to be doing is looking around locally and start preparing, not just prepping, but preparing for the austerity that's that's coming. I don't know what else to say. If I'm wrong, I'm hope I'm wrong. It, but we're going to find we're going to see today. I think as I go through this, I hope you pick this up. It, it's really almost predestined. It, it's inevitable. And I never liked that word because it's really not. But that's what's happening in our in the face of us not really working to stop any of this nonsense that we're seeing. It, it's really everywhere. Before I get too far, this is, I don't know how I even remembered this. It must have a, a yearly clock in my head because I wasn't thinking about any of it. I had to ask Grimner. This is donation month, February. We're already here, February. Second month already. Donation month. And I'm gonna th- I want to thank everybody who donated last time. You've made us be able to come to here, and we only, uh, Grimner only does this once a, m- a year relative to the reallibertymedia.com website and providing the archives, the hardware. He does all the work. Grimner provides all the coding behind it, all the upkeep on the websites, and keeps us flying, makes it really t- relatively easy for uh, us as hosts to come on and, and hook up and then make a, for myself and anybody else who wants to make a, a, a web page for the broadcast, what I call the behind the woodshed blogcaster where you get all the links to the content so we're here again and uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, got, had made ongoing donations every month those that made us donations throughout the year and last year went came in through that month and, and put money in i think it's roughly about 500 dollars usually i didn't hear whether or not it's higher this year but if you will, please uh, donate and keep this system working because, as you see, it's becoming more and more imperative to have a private place to uh, originate out of. And and so this is, um, in other words, the word, the word is going to be shut down. As I was telling you about Twitter, I won't get too far into that. It, I'm, I don't have, this last week has been really overwhelming to do anything extraneous like a Twitter thing as far as adjusting whether or not I'm there, but it's so it's so inconvenient right now that uh, I can just barely get enough to post there, but I can't read anything now. It's just down to, if I don't touch the browser, I can put a post. You're going to see a few there while I'm working this other, while I'm working on way more important things. This last week, not many people got emails. I'm having to focus my attention. Uh, just to let you know, I can't read someone's email, anybody's email, because my mind starts working on the problem. And so it's and when I have to focus my energy on one thing that's very important. In other words, it's a, a time, a fatal, in this case, it's a fatal time delay, a, a time a schedule that has to be met. There, I don't, I just focus on my energy. To, I cannot read anybody's email. So this last week has been sparse on any response. So if, any, if you had any emails even up to a week ago, I, I'm what, I'm, it's there for me. I'm, and, I'm, and I just haven't had a chance to get there. But moving on to, again, the donation month, if you will, please, anything you have, Governor will take, uh, uh, I mean, I think he's got the cryptos up down there. For those of you on the wild western frontier of digital currency, the blending of our uh, fiat life with our digital fiat life and then control. Uh, even so, if you keep those things private, I think they might be all right. But uh, dig- you can pay in lots of ways for a donation. Put a, what, how, I don't even know how it all works. I don't even know where the sources are. I've divorced myself a lot from the system. So I, I'm just not, I'm a Luddite that way. Not that I don't see advantage in certain certain of it, but as you hear me talk every week, it's not being used to your benefit. And you're not actually controlling it to use it to your benefit either. And as I say that, that's just to reference that we stay in the public side of the military web that was created to keep surveillance on everybody. Don't forget the origins of the Internet. And again, this is consistent with what I've been telling you for years and years on what the spaghetti western you live in the false front you live in is you've got a whole other underpinnings a whole other control structure 
We're going to see more of it today, as I keep on saying it. Uh, and I'll tell you the truth, it's getting very difficult to wonder what I want to talk to you all about it. I don't know what else to say. It's um, that you were going to see you having that letter I've been telling you to do, and then hopefully making up the habeas corpus or just getting ready to do something to defend yourself, have a better word in your mouth against even the people. I said you're going to have problems against the third parties. The people around you are going to become an enemy, and they're going to telegraph who you are and where you are, and the officials looking on will be able to see you coming. You don't want that ever to happen, so you've got to have answers pretty quick. And as I'm trying to figure this out, as I see what the, I said, you got to keep keep looking at how this how this works. Look at the videos you watch. Look at how people are working, acting around the people. Look at how the officials, look how the owners of the property or the so-called guards or the security, look how they respond. Look what what gets them to back off. Look what doesn't get them to back off. Look how they'll be on you for a while until you back them off. And it's not an argument. They don't they're not there to argue with. They're they're there to enforce this insanity. As I was looking at maybe a title, it's going to be kind of long. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but this is this COVID, which is really the political angle for climate change, through which is the political angle, another weapon angle through to bring on sustainable development, which you'll see at the very end of this broadcast, if I get to those tabs, is now, I told you it was going to be coming in your face, and it's all over the place. It's now coming in to explain some things to us. Now, this is the crime of all time. Marbles lost. People have lost their marbles over this COVID. And there no I don't find very many people at all that actually understand how the trick was done. Now, there's a lot of dismissive things, but those that can dismiss need to file their get their letter record that show and I mean we're gonna show this in one of the documents that just came out, they're ramping it up that you will have to show for you that there's no local com- determination against you for a communicable disease vector being a potential one what they're doing you're going to watch i hope and i get the. i hope i convey this i hope i show you in the documents they make up that you're going to be the vector in fact that's a fraud you're going to have to be able to identify it not as an argument as the fact and the only thing i can see is the linchpin was exactly what i told you a year and so ago i guess about a year ago i guess we're coming into the full year from march when it all got fully locked down that I told you you're going to have to have your own. Your traveling papers are going to be all the things the law said that you weren't subject. You're going to have all those. You have to have those proofs. If you say anything else, they're going to agree that you have to be in there. And the challenges have to come before it happens now. And I guess I should move maybe a little bit. Let me hold, let me do this first. Uh, recent last week and this week I was uh, dealing or maybe not, dealing with a, a local issue with a friend. And I, I've been telling you something about the habeas. And I said, you better have people that know about the habeas and have their own and have one of yours in their care because they're going to need to supply it. And I, we just got evidence that's uh, exactly what's going to probably happen as we move this thing through. But before I move on and into the habeas, slow burn 678 at Spreaker. And again, thank you, Grammy Mary, every month putting out the $20 to keep us there. And so all y'all on, on uh, Spreaker... Uh, there's um, someone that allows that account to exist so that I can post to you there. It all t- it costs uh, money to have all this thing going, and there's gracious and generous people that are helping us to do that. But Slowburn678 asks, first of all, if I check the messages and, and what would like to know about the habeas corpus I was talking about in the previous segment. Uh, yes, I, I will, but I haven't had the chance to get there. I, I'll do it right here for you if you're listening. I suppose you're listening. You've been pretty consistent with responding on on commenting on Spreaker, that was a that was the hail mary. If you have nothing else, go to Texas. Uh, I think it was um, in my in the minds dot com. Just in case, reminded me because I, I don't really keep up with where I said what I've said where I said it. Just in case says I believe in the minds. He put a comment on the on the particular broadcast was the one you want to look at is the busting omnipotent moral busybodies of May 31st of 2020. So look in, look at reallibertymedia.com and uh, find the Busting Omnipotent Moral Busybodies blogcaster page. And that link is there. When I get time, I'll put that in the comment of the speaker to answer you directly for the right now if you wanted to go there. And what that is, it's much preferable. Listen to me, folks. You, you can't really be using inter, interstate codes in order to implement what you need locally. It can work, 
but you have to know the deficiencies. You have to know more about it. I'm trying to pass on what's as easiest right now. And so if you, you really necessarily have to locate, and I don't know why this has been so much trouble for people, locate your writ of habeas corpus provisions in your state code. There should be a code for uh, extraordinary remedies or writs or uh, what is it, uh, provisional process even. That was a, a surprise to watch that one. Any of you who understand what my words are saying, you should be shocked anyway. But uh, anyway, it will lead into that too. But what what is it? What is a state? Uh, what are they defining it as and relative to uh, CDC and all this imposition now they're making from way afar away? Uh, then uh, so, a slow burn six seventy eight. You can use the habeas. Uh, I, I, it's the only one I put up a link for Texas because it was seems simple enough. Although you still have to do the reading, you still have to do the copy and paste from that list of what a habeas will need. It's much better to go to your state and copy that one and fill in some of the things they want you to do. I've told you, I've said this before. You have to have them because the legislature realized people trying to invoke habeas weren't fulfilling what was needed for the remedy. And so the, the legislature made it easy. They said, you have to say this and this and this, and you have to show this and this and this. For that state and that judiciary, because the, the legislature did that, the legislature is supposed to follow it. Now, I know I'm supposed to, and everyone else rolls their eyes, but this is where if you don't follow it, you don't get it. And I told you the story about how why that is. I was involved three times I wrote a habeas. I was denied every time until I went and talked to a good a lawyer, a real good guy, who asked me to come in four in the morning, and I went down because the same friend I will talk about in a second here was put in jail. And uh, he said, well, you have everything. You just don't have it in the right order. So not... So, and the point was, the judges have a, what they call a bench book, and they go down this bench book, this procedural book. And if it's not in order, they don't waste time with your paperwork. So that's why it's important. And when I did that, my friend was thrown in the street at 2 in the morning, the next, the next, the hours after I filed that, rushed it back in, rewrote it, rushed it back in, hours to drive to the county seat, dropped it in where he was, and uh, that night, right at closing, I walked in right at closing, in fact, I had to fight to get it in. They were arguing with me with min minutes, and I said, but it's still minutes before, and I handed it to them, and they took it. That night, at, or that next morning at 2 o'clock, he was standing on the street. They didn't want to mess with it, because if he, he's standing on the street, the habeas is moot now. He's released. And so that was, we we took that as the win. We didn't get to argue the point, but it doesn't matter. We wanted him out of, out of jail. So there's a reason why I tell you to do certain things. You then should study to see if, if anything's adjusted and be anticipating how you un understand how it works. So this is why I tell you to do what, I, what I'm telling you to do. It's not because it's up to me. It's up to some experience I have, limited as it might be, but it seems to be comprehensive enough that it covers most people, that you have to understand what you're doing in all these things. Write it the way your state says it. Texas might work because it looked like it had all the pieces that I think if you read through the list I had a link for. I can't go through all the states, so there it was. And I'm holding too much, mu too much time here to say that. I've been repeating this over and over. And uh, Pat, look under habeas, BTW, RLM, and, and Real Liberty Media, and see if you can't find a search engine that'll locate the habeas corpus uh, K, uh, broadcasts. But I'm, I'm, I'm taking even more time today to delineate a bit of this. This is becoming more and more important the more I see what's coming down. I don't really know what else to do. I don't know what else to offer. What else there is to do is much more complicated, and it's much more I say much more. It's really not. But what we're up against is a the corruption of this bar association inside your judicial branch. And this thing, the, the, the pressure on me in the last couple of weeks here is building up to that Tennessee case where they are just, it would be laughable if it wasn't so serious. What they're offering as responses, a judge no less, is just, it's criminal actually. But it's when you see the response, it's got nothing in it. And yet it looks, if from someone who doesn't understand, it looks perfect. It looks like, oh, they did it. Oh, they trounced the whole, they just destroyed your ability to remedy because the, the governor said I'm sovereign and I have no, I have no duty. I, there's no, not any duty I have to the law. And they support, and a judiciary supports that is your problem ultimately on something a lot more complicated than the habeas where the burdens are laid out much cleaner and quicker. And so I started there. It's down to the private man or woman that that works. It's in the code, in the constitutions. It can't be taken away. It hasn't yet. It sounds like it is. And I'll tell you here, this is, it can be, but it'd be taken away. But it's not from the judiciary that's not allowing it. 
And so let me get on to my friend who years and years ago explained he's the guy that I'd got involved with understanding when you fight a tra how to try that that you can fight a traffic ticket in a certain way. He essentially walked in the, into a law library. Him and, a, and another woman was there who's now dead, dead, and partly I think because of the stress of fighting the state. They were the only two people in the whole law library, and I'm looking for a long time in my books being lost. And uh, this friend showed asked me a question, and that was the beginning of a long relationship till now. This was way back in the 90s. And he explained to me how to go about through the books in basic form, how to find what I was looking for. And so that's a lesson everybody needs to find out. And once I did that, it was like, oh, is that is that all there is to fighting this? No, that that was a, a naive statement, but it was. There was That's all it was. I was able to take that knowledge, the very most basic knowledge on how you proceed in a writing paper and all that, and where to look, what to put in the paper, and essentially code plead it. You look at the codes and you just put them in, although I didn't understand that term before, and he didn't talk about it that way. Going to the words and phrases to free, work on how what these words actually mean, not what you think they mean. And uh, from there, I was able to take my first, my very first challenged court case on a traffic ticket and drag the thing on. I said, dragged it out nine months, and I got tired. Of, it was a cat and mouse game, and I wasn't the mouse. And eventually, I pre prevailed, but I got tired of fighting the stupidity of it all, and I said, I got other things to do. And I beat down that cop, and I learned how to do that, and I didn't know if I had any effect. And it, three months later, I was at a party. That cop showed up to investigate. It was a city cop, municipality, tried to investigate a, a noise a, a noise problem. That it was a party that I was there. It was a, I guess the karaoke was a little bit too loud. It happened to walk up from a, have eaten a plate of food, and the cops were all out front. And the cop that uh, messed with me was the one talking to my friend who owned the place. And he said, you know that guy? And the guy, and my friend said, yeah. And he goes, uh, I don't want to mess with that guy. I'm out. Of, we're out of here. And by the time I walked in, put my plate in the sink and come out, they were gone. All these cops, must have been 10 cops, going to rice, rice, rile the place up. And they were gone. They did not want to mess with what I'd done to the guy. And keeping him up, he worked swing shift, and I figured it out. I figured out how to write motion so they ha he has to show up to my motion hearings. And I mess with that guy twice a week at least having him to have him up from swing shift show up into my court case doing my motions at eight o'clock in the morning because they weren't going to allow him to they weren't going to allow me to have my case before all the other attorneys and so at two in the afternoon we're hearing my my motions and he has to be there and he has to get out about two thirty half an hour later and he has to go back to work again i did that to him for probably eight months well say six months after i figured this out all right, so there's a lot behind what I'm telling you about how to mess with these people when they start messing with you. But that They don't want to mess with you after you show that you are a little bit formidable. The only way you do that is do what I'm suggesting. You go read those codes and you start using the word and the language from the code and you use it properly. I'm way off what I was going to do, but this has become, I'm really, really, I don't even know what, I have no adjectives anymore at how, what I believe, uh, I think it's supported, what we're all facing. And we're going to have to really settle down a lot. Anyway, I better get off of this habeas, go to the Texas. I ask you to go to your state code. That's the only real way to do it. Follow it. Copy and paste it. Keep it in order. Those things you have to say that are statements in the in the list of things, leave them. Just You don't have anything to do. If it says you have to say this, say it. Those that have an, a place where you have to add, then you add your particulars. But you keep it very concise because the habeas is not supposed to be that big and long. And if you have your letter... And you have your, your letter that they don't have the facts and they haven't found, you then point out within the rules, they haven't, there was no medical report made on you. And they don't have that medical report in order to do an investigation and cannot, could not have come, the local authority could not have come to the conclusion that you were someone susceptible to someone that had it actually the first time. Then you're going to be sitting in a better position than if you didn't say any of that and didn't have that letter. And this is going to this local de determination is going to become very important as I move on, and so I better get there. But anyway, all these things coming together in my mind. Uh, again, donation time, appreciate it. And I think, as you are listening, I just now see across 
over from Grimner, RLM chat, which anybody can get on the website. Again, Grimner has a lot of tools and things and games that you can do, and not that there's games that occupy your time. And while you're occupying your time in the chat, when you're playing trivia, you can be talking with people too. So there's a place to come together. But he says, um, uh, Christopher Powell, thank you for your donation. And I also noticed uh, James Jensen, thank you for yours. And uh, appreciate the support, because this is, again... You know, there's other places, certainly, but this this is a private server type thing that it's going to be a lot harder. It's a lot harder than going to the YouTube. As you see, anybody who tries to simulcast this this broadcast or syndicate it, right now, the, the two or three main people I know, they're down. They're not able to do, they're not posting until March. And so this is, uh, we have to combat this. And uh, all I can tell you is I, d I come here every week. It was placed upon me a long time ago somehow to do this to be the watchman, uh, to be then the watchman that says what is there to see. And there's no way I can do for you what you need to do for you, but I can anticipate what that that might be with what I see, how I see it, whether or not you yet see that. And so I don't know what else to do. I'm just, I've just got this thing I have to do here. I want to walk away from this so many times, but it's really there's a bigger thing going on, and I just get impressed with that. You know, at some, you just, sometimes you just want to throw your... I understand why people just throw their hands up. It, I don't even know why I'm still here but at some point. But I do know why I'm here. And it's just always this double this, this double problem. At any rate, let's not dwell on all that. It gets to a low spot at some point. I watch a lot of people getting hurt and now dying. And I don't see the right response. And I see people who try to come to do something are... They're tied up by their own ignorance, and it's not—it's not a judgment. It's just we just have this ignorance. The thing that was built up around us was contorted just enough that it's very difficult to understand. And the multi-levels are coming at us. It's very low. That, you know, when you're a when you're a man or woman with a, in a way, a pure. You know, we're not we're not all pure, but when you come at it with with the way we were told you to come up with honesty and you don't tread on other people and you you keep to yourself and you do within you and you strive for what you want. You are not prepared to watch the people that didn't listen to that and decided they were going to take advantage of those that did. And the nation's awash with these people that are good people, but they're an ignorant people. And so it's a very difficult condition. I mean, it's not, I've never speak in judgment. I may maybe sound like I'm criticizing. This is a serious problem. We have a th serious thing to fix, or it's going to fix us. And I don't know how much more to say about that. It's not just seeing that they're doing this. It's, there has to be an engagement. You're going to have to protect yourself. One of the things I noticed was a habeas. Let me get to my friend recently. We didn't even know it happened because of the way, you know, we don't, it's not like we communicate with each other. Like we're, we're not paranoid. We just move around our lives. Well, he got picked up on a tra another type of traffic thing and got put in jail for about a week. I found out hours before he was released. When I found out, I jumped on to get the habeas, a habeas written, but I have to, you have to find out specific to your case. That's why COVID is kind of interesting. It's easy to do that ahead of time on that subject matter. Well, by the time I'm pulling stuff together, he does come with another friend to talk to me. Well, he was in jail. And you have to understand the treatment you may get. You have to, it's like torture training. If you understand the treatment you get, you'll do far better. When you don't, it's very difficult to keep up with the torture techniques and to be and to function in a correct way. You start making mistakes. It's real easy to make mistakes. And so I'll just he faced in twenty twenty one. It's the same thing I think Assange why Assange didn't get extradited. Not because they're not going to persecute the press, but because but because the the jails of the United States, and this would have been the federal jails, are are known to be inhumane, so inhumane, inhumane you can't send anybody to them, not if you're outside the, outside the country. So those of you inside the country should th think very carefully about that problem, that he was subjected to these passive, if you will, torture techniques, things that won't put marks on you. Just because of the position he's took, the rights he's inserting, and he's not, again, this is the guy that started me out. And it's not that we completely agree on things, but we certainly understand that system. We certainly understand how to approach it. And he's come to me to ask me relative to something 
he needs now relative to information I've done a study on relative to your right to travel, not because it's a right to travel, but because there's a certain approach that you take. That you, you will go into the jail, you could go into jail, and they're going to put passive torture on you. And a lot of it's t temperature. They strip you down pretty much to nothing. They in this case, they didn't give them any socks either. And then they turn their air conditioning on. And they let you sit there. And they let you sit there, and they let you sit there for hours and hours and hours. So they then come in to try and get, in this case, they wanted a PCR test, which he said, is that a contract you're handing me? And they went away. Then they stuck him in a chair, so he had to be stuck in this in this cold without any blankets. He didn't have any blankets. So understand that these people are beyond incorrig incorrigible. These people are, pri are criminals. These are psychopaths who think they can do this stuff to you. And the worst part of this, uh, well, it's not the worst part. It's just the and continuum that you have to understand. And uh, this, for those of you with the habeas who think you're going to have it and that's your end-all, be-all, no, it doesn't stop there. Why you have to have friends? That timely no, and this is the problem I have, is that the, my knowledge didn't come to me till too late. He was already out by the time I'm compiling information to try and send something in. But he had already asked. He's not ignorant of how to do habeas, even orally. And he said that he wanted, he told them that he wanted to file the habeas corpus from inside. And they said, we don't do that here. In a way, they know. They know what happens when you do that. And so those of you thinking that you write, have a piece of paper and that works for you, it doesn't. When this thing comes down on you and you enter into one of those facilities that's going to do that, you are cut off from the world. Now, I would offer you, the only other alternative you have is to keep your wits about you, understand that, just deal with what they're doing, don't talk to them much. When you finally get ahead of a, into a, you have your first hearing, because they'll delay that. The state's code allows you them to delay it maybe up to 96 hours. I'm asking you to remember, if they won't let you file the habeas, that you tell, the first thing you tell the officer of the court, get it on the record. I know lots of you people that have done this think that it's futile. I don't think it's futile. I think it gives you power and a strength, a different dignity and assertiveness and a righteousness to be able to put on the record something better than just chattering your teeth and mumbling about your rights. As you tell the officer of the court who's listening that they've denied your right of habeas corpus and that you want to orally file an, an objection through the habeas, a demand for habeas now. And you better have in your mind how you're going to go about doing that. So you're going to need to remember that list of things that's in the code. It's about seven things you have to remember three or four of which are just rote memory, and the other couple are things you have to include that you know specific to your position, your condition. And I'm going to, because there's nobody to protect you there. There's nobody that knows you're there. They won't let you call out. They won't let you do everything you thought you had to do, which tells you another thing. And you're going to have to deal with this on your own. You are alone. And I've been trying to prepare people for this. And this is where I just don't see an avoidance of this at all. They're going to, these people are making, these are bureaucrats that make declarations without authority, pointing to somebody who doesn't have authority and police power, and say that you are the one that's guilty without, without due process. You're presumed that way. It's the way you've been treated and, and understood that, but don't know why and how. But if you are denied, like my friend was, and this is the interesting thing for all that he knew. And this is what I'm telling you. You can know a lot and still they beat you down in your mind. And they beat you down and you, your body wants to wants to rebel against the tortures, the various types of things they do to you. And so I asked him, did you do an oral habeas? And he didn't. That's why I'm telling you. You have to assert your rights. And if they deny you one way, you have to go after it again. If they, if you don't, and you don't do it to them on when you're inside, you do it on paper. I think the word is called a kite. You write them the kite. You get it in the record, and you tell the the, the first judicial officer whether or not you agree 
with them or whether or not you think they're corrupt. You get it on the record that you've sent kite requests or you sent requests on paper in the court. And you want them to be brought forward to the court to show you that. And if not, you're making an oral habeas petition, demand for habeas corpus. And then you lay out what it is in short form because you won't have the idea to do it longer, I'll just tell you. And your whole being should be focused on remedies, even if they're denied to you, to make records where you can that they are being denied. And you stay on point, and you don't ramble, and you don't tell them about your rights, you just tell them what's being violated that they didn't have a right to violate. If you listen to what I've been saying, you can incorporate those felonies. You bring up the fact that they don't, and in this case, let's say go, let's go to COVID, although his is the traffic. Well, in this case, let's go to the traffic. There is a proof that can be made, at least in the West, I don't know about the East, because the, they took it as adoptions of under, understanding the common law, if not the judge-made law, but the, the natural law of travel, of being able to use the roadway, the via. They took it naturally into the co states on the east, where that wasn't the case in the states on the west, with the grants of the highway that had to happen because the, were, the public uh, domain was in federal holding. But there's a proof that can be made in, made in the west, and I've made it, that the revenuer in the municipality or the officer doesn't have a right. They have no jurisdiction. The courts have no jurisdiction. The administrative function of the, of the government in the motor vehicle code has no jurisdiction, and it has to be done. It has to do with the disposal acts and the primary disposal being granted to the federal government, taken giving the state did that in order to become a state, and that the grant back did not provide for any regulation authority, and uh, it only represented the fact of your right to move about on the roadway, not the motor vehicle code in the roadway. And so, the short form of that, that is the assertion that gets put in that said that the cop that stopped him didn't have probable cause because there was nothing that was an irregular offense that wasn't already granted to him by Congress. Every, that's all of y'all. On the, on the West, anyway. On the East, it would be just an adoption of, of, the, of the fact that the roads are, are a grant to the people, not to the government for regulation. But anyway, I'm going to get off point here. So... The statement in the habeas for the traffic, if you will, which is trafficking, which is commerce, which you're not in, is that there's no court jurisdiction, there's no jurisdiction in the, in the stop in the officer that stops you, therefore he could not get probable cause to do a thing, therefore the, the detention is wrong because it has no basis in law, and there's no court that actually can oversee that because there's no jurisdiction. And the demand for whatever they were doing, in this case it was tags or whatever, is not in the Motor Vehicle Code. They don't have jurisdiction because their rights come from, have to rise up high enough. The administrative power has to rise up high enough to interfere with the right, but the legislature has not allowed that to happen when you look closely at your statutes. And this is all just copy and paste code, folks, when you start understanding what I've been talking about. This is not an argument about your right to travel. This is about showing how the government, the extensions of the power of government don't reach you. You place yourself in a you put yourself in a place other than they fraudulently place you. And here, I'm going to get out of this. The habeas will be denied, can be denied to you. In this case, it was. As I told you, you've got to have people with, that understand what a habeas is, and they, you can file on behalf. When it goes to that point, you better file, send to. You try to file on behalf, and you also send into the, the jail where they are at. And in that letter, you put that they have been put on notice, that they are now served. with that habeas, and therefore they cannot deny it, and then you send another affidavit out to the court that they've been served through that, and you send the copy of that service back out to the court. Why? You're making a record to show that the, that the habeas has been denied at this point. But you have to know your friend is in at that point. You have, and, and the way this, this COVID thing comes down, they go to the store, they don't come back, you won't know it. Just like he what picked up, I didn't know it for a week. It's not like we see each other all the time. And so, there's a dynamic you're working into. There is a war going on, and you're completely out of out of information on this. I'm trying to help people to understand what the, beyond the illusion that they believe. Even about the dismissal of the illusion, it's beyond that. And I've got way off of where I was going to start, but this becomes so important. In fact, it's just been wrapped my mind up. What do we do here now, especially with what I found here on the tablets? I think I'm going to get a get-to here real quick. 
Uh, first, I'm going to hit something. Maybe this is a, a PSA, a, a people service announcement behind the woodshed. And, and this has got to tell you what's going on in this country with, with corporate governments and the supply of processed food food and they don't care and they could care less about your little ones and i want to tie this little one uh, this story about the little ones and their food way up because these little ones are going to be the ones that you're leaving the world to that are, they are already destroyed if you let it happen in two generations these little ones today in 75 years are going to be you or just a little bit older and less effectual than you are today but that is an ex- Exponential deprivation of their freedoms in just two more generations of people that are babies today. And they're going to do this to you right now. High levels of toxic heavy metals found in some baby foods, U.S. report. U.S. Congress congressional investigators found dangerous levels of toxic heavy metals in certain baby foods, certain baby foods that could cause neurological damage neurological let's just stop there i don't I really don't want to read these things these companies certain companies and you, i could read the what do i read do i go down and read it's surprising me. it surprises me some of these companies somehow haynes celestial group which used to be an organic company it used to be the high standard their beech nut nutrition and gerber nestle well we know those those guys are jerks I want to take your water, I want to take the water out of your ground water uh, from you and then charge it back to you, and the governments are okay with that. Walmart, Campbell Soup, Sprout Orga- Organic Foods, Sprout Organic Foods is high levels of heavy metals. Now, there's a problem with this because they may not be able to get rid of them. And they can't let you know that. And that's the other problem that's sitting inside this. These companies are willing to put these heavy metal toxins that do what? Cause neurological damage. What is the... the uh, the mRNA vaccine target. This is, again, as I've said before, in other areas, in the, in the glyphosate with the mineral depletion. It all targets your, not all, it targets out lots of stuff, but it ta- targets your neurological system so you're not going to function correctly. You're not going to be mobile correctly. In the future, these babies are going to be you at 75, and they're going to be incapable. They're going to be the victims of the current onslaught, the genocide, and the pairing off of the obligation of the government, if you last to 75 as well, for the pension funds that are sitting there having to pay out on top of all this. But PSA, People Service Announcement Behind the Woodshed, your toxic heavy metals and the government is looking at, the congressional persons looking at this, and the government and and the corporations are not wanting to participate. Okay, so the, this is what we're setting up. If they're willing to do this, then all these co- other corporations that want to bring pharmacological med- treatments to you, pharmacological treatments to you, are doing exactly what this is doing, and nobody's saying anything about that. At any rate, the whole thing is just not, not the way you would think, and there has to be an, a way to address this. You have to figure that out, otherwise, if you have any little ones in the world, they're this. They're they're going to be this right here. It'll be neurologically damaged old folks that can't defend themselves and can't defend their any offspring that they might have. And it's going to happen in two generations. Like just the writing is on the wall. This isn't even a new story, folks. This is the whole point about it. But it makes more sense now when you watch them keep coming along. Congress is still twiddling its thumbs over making the question instead of looking and seeing that the agencies of the government have failed and maybe we don't need them anymore. We need to do other things give people notice of the problem so they can protect themselves. This has been going on for a long, long time, actually. And I don't, and now we just hear the, this thing, but to me it's no different. They're wanting to inject your little ones with all kinds of jabs that we find out if they do that, they present themselves, they set up themselves the precondition of getting sicknesses and or susceptibility to sicknesses in a great, much greater manner. I guess the point here is the war is on, the war has been on, the people and the people are crickets and i don't know what it takes it's not again it's not just you seeing and then you don't agree that you know oh yeah i say it's wrong that's not going to stop this at all biden dhs suggests that nearly everyone dissatisfied with the status quo is a potential terrorist as we see this uh, story come through i think i might have commented on this last week i want to bring it up again uh, they anybody who doesn't believe in the status quo which is their status quo 
It's not the status quo. If you bring the status quo, they don't. They go cricket. They go crickets. What they're trying to do is create a status quo. They're bringing an alternative status quo, which they're claiming status quo, and everybody says okay. And the status quo is if you don't agree with them in anything, you're going to be outed and you're going to be treated as a potential terrorist. Now that's that's encouraging because you have at least one word in your mouth there that you can show that you're not. You're not going to do it on your argument. You're going to do it on the facts that you bring, the, the points of law that you bring, the condition and status that you bring to stop them. And then you're going to have to have, I'm telling you about the numbers of people. It can't just be you. You might be okay and prevail, depends on where you are, but that's the point of who you're dealing with. You have a lot of people that are around you that understand all this. It's, it, they may go after one, but they, you know, this... They were telling you in a way, I didn't agree with how they were implementing it, but where one goes, they all go. Yeah, that kind of thing, but better. It's not just this mindless Q nonsense, you know, follow Trump over the edge that he's leading you down, the Pied Piper stuff. No, no, no. We stop and we say, wait a minute. Okay, where we have to support ourselves, that's the one. Where we all go in our applicable knowledge and we apply, apply the power of that knowledge, where we all know that and we all start watching that no one else gets interfered with, infringed on that, is when we'll be able to start doing this. Until then, a few of us that are stepping out will be treated like my friend. You go in by yourself, you got nobody, no communication, and they deny you for a week. And they torture you for a week. Put your mind on this. And they deny you things that the law says, the law says, why everyone jokes about it, that you don't have them, why they think it's suspended. What this is, is not, not complaining. Now, what's my friend's going to do, and it took him, it's interesting, he came out, and he was not really himself for a couple days. It, it just took, it took, this is a guy that spent 69 or so days in uh, state jail for his convictions, for his beliefs, for the law, for the rights he has, and the state didn't want to agree, and he didn't eat. If you, you don't think this guy knows what he's doing, and also it, is intent on enforcing and asserting his rights as he sees them. So he came out, and this time he was a little different. And it took him a couple of days to come back from that, that torture thing. The lack of sleep, the interrupted sleep, the cold, uh, your body starts to go into shock. The mental things that are going on is a big strain and a big stress. Laying down is even, for any length of time, even starts to play on you. And so once he took a two days from get, getting back up, an ambulatory, if you will, and moving about the country again, at least as bit as he did. You know, he came back and talked to me and asked me some more things. And so he's turning his attention now to start to out what happened to him. Because most people don't. And this is what's coming on to us, this presumed authority to say, we don't do the habeas here. And you're going to have to be assertive about the facts of that denial and make, and tell people you're being denied. Those that have the authority to hear or the one that can be liable. Like I said, any little thing you might want to do is when you communicate, anybody from the jail who opens that habeas is served. And they're an agent of the sheriff or whomever is, it might be a private company, that is served with the habeas. You don't let them play the game. You start pressing the procedures against them. But you have to know them. Moving on here. Biden declaring anybody who doesn't believe in the, their way is a potential terrorist. We move on to DHS terror alert issued for the first time in a year targets those upset over lockdowns. This is all rolling out just like I told you. You will not have an argument. And that's why I said don't make an argument. Position, create a status that they can't touch and show the felonies for doing the, for touching. DHS terror alert issued for the first time in a year targets those upset over lockdowns. You're upset over a lockdown. And you're considered to be someone that they can attack. This is the Department of Homeland Security. I told you 9-11 isn't stopping just because it's 20 years later. They're la ramping this thing up and tightening you down. You can't, you don't have to, you can't have an opinion now. He will tell you what you are looking at. As I read through the second paragraph of this report, don't call them terrorists, speaking of those who went down and tried to enter the house of the people as rambunctious as they did, and they was, 
But don't call them protesters, Biden said, as a largely peaceful pro- march on D.C., which ended up a few hundred goons out of 10,000 of peaceful protesters raiding the Capitol. There were, uh, they were a riotous mob, insurrectionists, domestic terrorists. It's that basic. It's that simple. See, he's now defining what he has no authority to define. And each one of them, men and women that were there, will better know what authorities they were there for, and not just because they were one of the sheep they denied being. But we have to know about these, you know, the black and white, that Constitution being a GD piece of paper. Yeah, absolutely. And when President Bush told you that, he knew there's a bigger plan on the rolling. And we're seeing that. It is just a piece of paper until you start asserting it in the way I've been suggesting. You attack and challenge jurisdiction right up front the proper way. You just don't say they don't have it. You explain how they don't have it. That requires at least a second step of knowledge. So he's going to come and tell you that these, don't you dare call these people, don't you dare have a different opinion. The status quo is all these people were, all of them were protesters, were insurrectionists, were domestic terrorists. And if you think differently, the DHS wants to talk with you if they'll let you talk. You're a domestic terrorist. CIA counter-terror chief suggests going to war against domestic insurgents. Now, you can say suggest going to war. I've been telling you you've been at war. They've just been making it invisible to you. And I told you they were going to be making that more obvious now. When you didn't respond the first 20 years, they're coming after you with what you, they know you don't know about. The former head of the CIA Counterterrorism Center has suggested the counterinsurgency tactics used by the military in Iraq and Afghanistan should be applied to domestic extremists inside the US, United States. You domestic terrorists, we told you that way back in the P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act. We told you that. We. Those of us who told you that. Certainly behind the woodshed, that's about all you hear when we talk about that. I've laid out how they did it. I laid out to you that they even denounced the Libra Code. There is no law. It's a bureaucratic nightmare what you're facing. And they're going to put the military tactics inside the United States. And don't underestimate, as I think about this, and I have been, more. For those of you that think that the Second Amendment is going to help you, I want you to put your... And I'm not a military guy. They didn't want me five times. And it wasn't because I wasn't capable. I guess what I was asking for was just a little bit. Be, they, they wanted to give it to me, but there was always a, a hiccup in the, in the a hitch in the giddy up regarding what I was wanting to do. So I'm not a military guy. So those of you that are who have been trained, maybe think about something. Look at the United States and watch. Look at this as a military operation by the mili- by a military. And you look at me and look at your troops, which are the rest of the people, and tell me whether or not any of those troops are going to be able to get together too much farther in the future to be able to amass enough to be able to be someone that they could fight, that can be a fighting unit, could be a resistive unit, even if you start the process peacefully like I'm asking you all. Look at this from the military perspective, and you'll realize your soldiers are all locked down and agree to that. Those of you that will step up and come together will be e- easily convinced identified they've already separated out everybody you're not going to be able to walk in and hide the urban area that the military was telling you about in 2015 they had been done doing studies on how they were going to address has been addressed in you and so we're tactically out out positioned at this point as well and so they're already telling you what i've been what anybody who, who's looking closely at this has told you you were and have been the domestic extremist, the enemy combatant, folks. That's what was in the P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act. All the memory hole information that goes away. I, I now know what it is to, to have forgotten more than, I've, than I know now. Forgotten more than it's, you learn more than you forget. You don't know. It's all back there somewhere. But here it is, right in your face. I told you this was going to be put right out there now. Now, to me, it doesn't. You've already be. You've always been determined to be a domestic extremist, a domestic terrorist, relative to the military districts that were put on you. Those federal districts that you don't think you know or you don't understand are sitting there, and uh, we're going to maybe touch. We, hopefully, we'll get to that and touch you. How the federal government re- looks at this place and defines it. But they're uh, they're going to go to war now. Okay, they're openly telling you. 
the urban environment is not really a threat to uh, a hardship for the gov for the military of the government to deal with as it was 20 years ago when they were super concerned. Now, why were they super concerned? I'm telling you, in the 80s, something about came down in this country that never actually, somehow it got diffused, not because there wasn't, Men and women in the company that were country that were ready to go weren't ignorant about not moving too soon. They bided their time, and something happened to release the pressure, and we never saw what was building to happen. And I can only believe the government did that. They noticed they had a serious problem. They backed it down. They told us about that with these other military things and urban mega mega urban establishments. They were telling us that they did a research after they saw what was happening. And they've looks like to me they may have solved that. And anybody with a military mind, look at your country and your soldiers, which are the rest of the people. See how many soldiers you have left if you want to move to the Second Amendment. I'm not so sure. Maybe someone who's got a better, better military mind with this herd of cats that's the, the, called the people of the United States of America. Maybe you can inform me a little bit better than my myopic view, my myopic, uneducated military sense looks and sees. That here it comes now, for those of you that think the Second Amendment's going to work, and I told you this is incremental, and how they figure this out, and how they're going to do it, and take you down. They've got you now locked away. You don't have ability to come together. In fact, you'll fight amongst yourselves about doing that. The biggest gun control bill in history targets the poor, will make millions of felons overnight. Not just the poor, it's those that have a right to bear arms. So let's not miss the point here uh, from the Free Thought Project, H.R. 127 known as the Sabika Sheik. Notice the names here. If you look at ethnically, the names are consistent with the people that they were after relating it back to another place, now thrown inside your country, you. Firearms Licensing and Registration Act introduced by Republican, uh, Representative, excuse me, Democrat, Representative Jackson Lee Sheila is, without a doubt, the most tyrannical gun control bill ever proposed. Like it, all gun control measures, this bill would hit the poor and minority communities the hardest. Its massive scope would also turn tens of millions of legal, law-abiding gun owners into felons. You need to read what this is about. You need to read the bill. You need to see what it's going to pertain to, how it pertains. There's a, a couple of answers, possibly, but I'm not going to suggest any of that here just for this discussion. Understand that when they look at the, what, what, and this is a proposed bill, they're saying you're going to have to pay a yearly fee to keep registered your guns at about, I think they said 800 bucks. Well, that's a whole lot more than just the poor that would have to pay that, that I don't think can pay that. That if you don't pay that, then you're going to become this criminal. That if you don't understand how they're doing this and come after this, in earnest, incrementally you won't have a gun to go. So they will have locked you down, got rid of their urban warfare problem, because there is no going to be nobody that can mobilize within the urban sector that makes it a problem. And then you're going to have pea shooters. And even those will be, will, will probably be outlawed by the time we get there. So if you think that, that your right to bear arms was secure, go look at the Constitution. It says that could be amended out if the people, the representative of the people so wish. Instead, now, they're going to do it administratively. And so everything I've talked to you about administration things is working here, and they're going that route. And they're going to take the stuff away from you over time. I mean, again, by the time your neurologically impaired granddaughter or grandson gets to your age now, they have nothing, literally nothing. And guess, Santa Claus... Genghis Khan Schwab says they'll like it. You'll have nothing and like it, he says. And I think it's going to happen. Because people don't have the first clue about property. And I haven't said this in a long time. If you don't know about property, you probably are property. If you complain, that's not knowing about property. Because you're not protecting the property called you. No, you become the human that they're doing their thing to. And you sit there and chew your cud. Well, or sound like crickets. Because it's just so comfortable. They're not really coming to do anything to you, are they? Oh, I don't need to travel over the overseas, so I don't need to go through that. And yet we're seeing technology come right into your homes. And you don't even realize that. 
you do, but you let it in. You keep on doing it. So here, go ahead and look at this bill, HR-127. See what it does. See all the impositions it has. You better start coming up with a response. I can't touch it all. I got ideas, but they don't. I can't keep up with it all. I need, I need help for sure. You need to look far up into the future on how this has been working and, and figure out how to undermine it. Otherwise, they're taking away everything that you thought you, you fought for as veterans, that you thought that you were standing up for as people that had think you have rights, that any aspiration you thought in this United States of America, the land, the home of what? I don't even know what it is anymore. No one can say it. What is it? The home of the brave? Really? The land of the free? I think I said it's the home of the slave and the land of the fee. And you're finding out, if when this bill would go through, you'd be paying your fee of $800 every year. No, how that's not a in direct infringement, I don't know, but you're dealing with the judiciary that, bill, that the members of which belong to an organization, a non-governmental non, uh, organization who cannot take away your civil rights to pay fees and taxes. Uh, in the Bar Association, who have agreed that you, everyone should have a knot tied in their pistol, forget about the rest of the stuff. And notice that they're attacking, in these bills, military style. Now, whatever style has to do with anything, I don't know. But against the right to bear arms and against the government itself, I'm not so sure that these bills even have the power, that, that they can. they don't have the right to make a law like that. But who is there to talk about it? Who is there to talk about it? Is nobody. Complain about it? Yeah, we got lots of that. But really bring it out, assert it in proper ways, and keep keep pounding on that hard. And in great numbers, that's why I said Virginia was the Virginia really was it. I keep I can't escape this thought. Virginia was our closest ability to do this. Make that mark. And thank you, as I see the look over to RLM chat. My dog Rex, thank you very much for your donation. To keep the RLM servers and Grimner in, into all the hardware he needs to keep up with to keep this voice going. And others, folks, uh, again, as I, I didn't mention, Grimner offers the platform. It's wide open. Whatever hour you don't hear making some uh, live broadcast is open for you. If you have a contribution, folks, it's this time. Time to make it. Time is now, however you can do, to start know it, giving. I think it's you have to give your workable experience right now because we need people being able to hit the ground either running and hopefully not running from them but running at them in the proper way uh, running to the places they need to be running not protesting and standing around protesting we need to be a, a knowledgeable people in the action of defense of ourselves and more importantly our little ones those of us those of you that that have them and my dog Rex thank you again you you've been around doing you are great great supporter of lots of people I appreciate that I know a few people that I know and I appreciate that and so this is the what keeps this word going out and I hope hopefully I know people say that I don't I'm being shadow banned I'm not so sure I really look around uh, yeah I do much better like on mines or bit shoot and even not even beyond me walrus's account of bit shoots lots thank you folks over there and thank you for entering into the conversation in Walrus's account at BitChute, engage this information, start to apply it. Walrus, thank you for what you do. And because you're not on YouTube, I guess you can continue to do that to give the word out. She does her, or her I think it's a she, a, a walrus with a pink bow. Maybe I'm uh, politically incorrect here, but at any rate, the um, word goes out and, and it starts from RLM. And so, what starts in RLM can ripple out to everybody else. And if, again, get back to you, if you have content, Grimner will set you up. In fact, I, I don't know the, I mean, he hasn't said he won't no more. So I think it's still going. It's an ongoing thing. And as I look up again, I see Vine, Vince Easley is going to be coming back on air Fridays, noon central with American dissonance. So he's coming back to give us whatever hiatus he took to come back and tell us some more things and I would hope that you take that information and pass it on and the hosts come on with their quality stuff and they again speak 
not in these abstractions. I, I kind of do a little bit of that because it's the nature of what I do, but not to the point where you're not functional. Not to the point that we're doing, like I said, pie in the sky last week. It's not pie in the sky. Don't be, don't be ridiculous. It's fuzzy peak unicorns dancing on rainbows. Is what the status quo is coming on. It's unity rainbows, no the less. And if you have a word to counter those, and I'm asking that maybe the word also, I know it's, I shouldn't put a, a condition, but help, if you have an insight on how to st help stop it, please come and make a broadcast to help people understand that. But moving on to this war against you, being lifted elsewhere to be dropped in other places, right on your head actually at home, the home of the brave so-called. Brave, you're not real brave when you get uh, when they start attacking you in your life and your necessities of your life. You start worrying about the necessities of your life and how you're going to get them. And I've talked to you all about this dynamic. And I'm not I'm not such a genius to figure this out. This is look at the history and how the how governments, how psychopaths have figured out how to take care of you. And then the most insidious one is they use your brain. You do it to yourself against you. And they know you, as I said over and over when I read Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. They say they know you better. And I realize that they do. And they can use that. And they do. And you see it in the psychological warfare. You see it in the susceptibility of the population. You watch it across as your so -so fellow soldiers who have the right to alter or abolish government don't even though you watch the oppression killing them. And they suck the rest of the rights that you have or thought you had to assert. They take that all away from you. Notice fees is also this monetary system. Maybe you should consider how you don't have that, and you can put that against it. Well, I don't have the money, so do you have the right to take that from me? No, you'll say, you'll find out. Unwarranted restraint of your liberty, folks. This is a habeas against that issue. I'm not saying to wait. I'm saying these are the things you start to assert now to tell people and, and interest people that there's something important happening that they better have a word in their mouth and you hand it to them whether or not they understand it at this time. Like I've been talking for, for years. I don't know that a lot of people truly understand what I've been saying. And I know that me, I don't know what that sounds like to people, but it's, it's not a judgment. It's just an observation. I don't see a lot of the reflection of what I think needs to come from people once they really start to see this. And it's not like getting all, you don't get all freaked out and you don't, you don't say all of a sudden, you don't be championing things. This is a, it's almost a big humility. You start realizing how out of position you are and you say, I better really settle down here, really look closely at this. And then you must methodically go after certain things. You methodically direct your energy in certain places. And I say that because I don't feel like I'm so big to do much. I can only do certain things. I can contribute where I can contribute. In fact, my dog Rex, the contribution on top of the donation, he, his input directed me to somebody that I do believe has the best case about COVID, but we're in a, in a and we're in a state that actually needs to be needs to be dealt with. Whether or not that can happen, I don't know. But there's connections that are made through people doing their things. So. Again, the, the crickets don't ha have to stop being the crickets if they really understand, if they think they understand. They need to stop being the crickets and do something. Yeah, i got to jump back around. Uh, the uh, About Ice Age Har Farmer, getting together with people, finding out that a, a fledgling organization that is trying to get people together has a little bit of this, but saying and taking that as inspiration, and you turn around and do your own thing locally. That's I don't know what else to do. Why wouldn't you want to do that anyway, even if it wasn't it was such a dire looking thing going forward? And so you can take you can do things and it doesn't have to be what I say for sure. It doesn't have to be. But I I just see some things coming down I think you're gonna to have to. I don't know how we avoid it. Biden announces an end to US support for Saudi led offensive in Yemen. Now I say this and you might say, Well, well isn't that good? Yeah, he's listening to support because he's gonna take all this all this stuff, and he's going to dump it on your head in the United States of America now. Biden announces end of support for you. We should have never been there. And yet we are. And he's going to end the Saudi-led offensive operations. Again, reshaping American foreign policy. 
Well, remember, foreign from the federal United States district standpoint is the states of the United States of America. Don't misunderstand what's going on in the way the words are used. And I guess you can be stupid. I guess it's a place to be stupid a bit, to be kind of dumb and ask ask questions that don't take for granted what you read. And we're going to come on to this. I keep getting on to this. We're going to, after I go through all these endless war things and Biden's declaration of war and all the governments now against you at home, and the CDC pops up and says certain things about all the masks you're going to have to wear and all the things you're going to have to do. They speak from a district and they speak out. They speak outward. And they have jurisdictions in, the, in some areas and not jurisdictions in others. And to ask the simple questions on the terms is very important. Because the terms, the words you read, the terms, they're not words, they're terms. They have meanings and definitions. are critical. And any incongruity in them is question, you can question. And so I see incongruity and I cause myself a question. Then I go do some research and see if, if I can't find the real answer because I don't go and ask someone else or make a demand on somebody until I think I know really well what the answer should be. No different than how I asked you to approach COVID. You just don't go, I told you to go send a letter and this is what it should say, but I told you to go read the statute to verify and confirm these things were obligations and duties for the official to do. And then go look and see if the evidence was there. And if not, then make the demand for that evidence pursuant to the statute you found in your state. Not someone else's state, your state. Because that's the official's, the guidance for the official is determined by the legislature. You have the legislature making the law that's supposed to represent the people, and the executive branch executes that law. And so you place it back into its proper form, even though administratively it looks like it has it's formless, no borders, just like the centralists want to do. Endless war, title. Biden administration cancels planned removal of troops from Afghanistan. So at the same time they're pulling from from Yemen, they're going to go ahead and then we refer to you from Afghanistan, or Iraq, Iraq and Afghanistan as domestic terrorists. They're going to continue attacking domestic uh, the terrorists that they claim you are from there in the United States. In other words, they will stop. They have the decision to stop making war on some people and to continue it on others. And they're going to take apparently the resources that they were fighting in Yemen and giving to the Saudis or whatever benefit they get. And they're going to turn it on the United States of America. This is notice in the news for you. We don't know how else we can see this. And we may be seeing another false flag-ish type thing or whatever. Another distraction on the horizon as they beat the war drums some more. Head of Strategic Command warns nuclear war with Russia and China a real possibility. Well, I agree. That's always a real possibility. But it's under whose instigation? And then for what purpose? And if this administration and the military wants to keep you quiet, wants to get refocus your attention and give the administration support, it's going to make Russia and China a nuclear threat, like I was uh, told when I was young, and what we were supposed to do when the, we saw the flash and all that stuff. It's never gone away. It's always the same. And yet it's not really there, even though nations want to take out nations. So we are being warned of, uh, to my mind, if you will, the threat of fall or false flag of this nuclear option that they will pick to engender some f more fear on top. And this would be also be a good way if they make these types of wars, to get rid of the problem of the COVID. They've created it. It was invent. It was invented. It was modeled on computers. It was then given to industry to then model those uh, dev weapons of war and devices to you and put into mRNA, I don't know, you can't call them experimental guinea pig type stuff. It's certainly not a, a treatment, they call it now. It's not a vaccine. And uh, you accept it. Again, some of you didn't, you'll say no. Uh, That's not my point. I'm talking in generalities of what the society is doing. They, in fact, they, don't, they can't make enough, but they're doing it to people. They're willing to do it to people. And if they want to get rid of this burden now, as you see them start to adjust all these things, to try and relieve the problem so they can allow the, the flu to come back to be what it is 
and strip away the COVID, but continue the endless emerging disease by variant mutation, which the seasonal flu always does and get rid of the label of COVID-19, they're going to come up with another type of fear to put upon you. And so here we're seeing it. Biden announces the end of your support, and, and uh, again, another story of a steady led offensive, and another, uh, these stories I have, have little nuances that may allow us to understand. The options that they're being chosen, in other words, I guess the point here is, the stories tell us of these the decisions that are reported and what the a, the government can choose from. And from different stories, you can take, a, a, you get a different, a better picture. Why I say, go to the links and read, read for what you can see. I understand there's a shortfall there because you don't read the way I read. Not that it's better, but I mean, a lot of people have, can read better than me in some regard because you're not, I also have my, my, my focus that, you will see things. You will start to watch as they're they're explaining what's happening. And I say it's a mirror. I told you this a long time ago. We're just talking about the same stuff again. The contorted mirror that they look that you have to see, you look through relative to the reflection that they do in the Middle East is what they're doing to you here. The war is starting up again in earnest in Afghanistan. That they've determined that you here reflect those people there as domestic in domestic terms as being a terrorist. The mirror is starting to show, be polished again and shine where Trump gave us a little bit of reprieve from that. Let me move on now. With this war that's coming against you, it comes from many levels. And the getting into the now the supposed COVID condition and the implementation of all these orders, they make it up. It's a war against you. To me, there's no tactic that they're not using at, at this point. And uh, COVID is a weapon, but it's not just a military weapon against domestic terrorists who don't want to go believe in lockdowns. It's also going to be coming in, in other by other means and for other purposes. Again, I don't know of any government that hasn't bought into the public buy-in for global centralized control through what we see the technology. And I've shown you how, if you look carefully, they aren't really doing it against your laws. They're actually sidestepping the laws. And so part of that is understanding what we're being told. And I'm going to go through something here relative to the other war here to diminish you, to get you to be servient in order to take advantage. They always get the advantage and you don't, as long as you are quiet. In this international relations, if you will, in the travel, now we get international travel, the United States government has control a bit here in their interaction with other nations. And they're using this authority in order to come forward to purport an authority, an authority to control. I'm going to touch on some things in an order that came through that says, I mean, it doesn't essentially say, it says that you will you will be wearing your mask and you will be having to take tests and you will be uh, imposed even more and we have an authority. I mean, we have, we, we're, we're purporting this authority. And the document I'm reading from is the Center for Disease, Disease Control and Prevention Department of Health and Human Services order under Section 361 of the Public Health Services Act, 42 U.S.C. 264, and a Federal Code of Regulations, that would be CFR, not USC, CFR 71.2 and 71.31B. And so these are important to go to, although don't focus on those. you got to look at the context. But what I want to just point out quickly here on that, when you go to that context, let me see, I do have a link. I think I threw that up there. I decided I better do something. Yeah, okay, I went there, but it's, I'm doing the, the term that they use here in the United States. And uh, you go there and you start to read certain specifics, and they talk about quarantine. When I talk, in the, it's in the uh, area of the code, federal code, federal code for quarantine. Who has actual control for quarantine? Would be the states. And by the rules, I tell you to go find the duties and obligations. However, this is supposed to look from the federal government protecting outward. And so they have a quarantine authority that way. So this law doesn't actually apply to local domestic travel 
but it still will infringe on your international travel. And it does it by presumption of guilt, which they're not, again, their, their quarantine statutes have to be challenged, and I haven't done the federal study, that we're going to find out that it's also over a particular place, and maybe it might telegraph what spaghetti western illusion you think you look at is not what it is, and or a way to challenge the jurisdiction again. Because in this order, you go down a few a little ways and you find United States, and it has a, it's telling us that the United States uh, relative to this, what you have to do now, uh, relative to the testing, and how you're presumed innocent. We'll get to that at the end. But it, it pertains to a place, a uh, United States, a term. It has the same meaning as state and U.S. U dot S dot U.S. territory in 42 CFR 71.1.1b. Well, I went there. And you got. I, I didn't give a link over. You have to track it down. I may provide. I should. I will be providing these links. I have to actually have to transfer them over. I got them on the wrong computer, but I found I decided to get them this morning. When I started to read through, I decided I wanted to expand a bit on this to give you an idea of how you start to look at this and where you can go, and what incongruities you can bring up that causes you to be able to bring at least one thing of, of difference that no one else may around you that could help protect you. Again, this is not suggesting you win. This is suggesting you have a better record to make and a better resistance to put up, an asserting of your rights better and the extension of authority beyond what it's supposed to be to then bring in those felonies under the color of authority by unwarranted acts they take from you. In this case would be your unwar un uh, the unwarranted restraint of your liberty at minimum. Based on this document, supposedly, that's supposed to have authority. United States has the same meaning as state, as state in quotes, capital S, state, and U.S. territory, in quote, U.S. U, quote, U.S. territory. So I go into 42 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, not the U.S. Code. But folks, you gotta, I get so many questions on people don't recognize that the, the law and the rules are all kind of separated in different code books. And you keep the keep the designation straight. And sometimes when I'm speaking so fast, I get these code and the CFRs mixed up, and I got to correct that sometimes. This is a, a code of federal regulations. The rules promulgated to implement a statutory code, a USC. Okay, so they say go to 42 CFR 71.1b and look for state and U.S. territory. Well, just so happens you go there. And those two terms are not in the definitions as a definition to be defined. Where you do find, what you do find is the term United States defined. All right. So when you go there, you see means. Now, means is an interesting thing. You got to go look at what the word means means. And then it says the 50 states. United States, the term, two words, United States means the 50 states comma, the District of Columba, comma, Columbia, and comma, the territories, also known as possessions of the United States, including American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Marianas, Mariana Islands, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, did you see the definition for state, or did you see the word state as part of the word United States, and essentially the states is undefined. The dumb one in me asked the question, what do you mean by state? He said 50 states. Which 50 states? See, the dumb one in me says, there's a couple of territories and there's a couple of different definitions. And one of them is an administrative state and the other one is the one that attaches to where? the United States of America. It was in Union State, the states of U in Union. And so there's a different place. There's a different thing. There's an incongruity. You can't just say 50 states when I know, when I did some research and I found out there's 50 states that are administrative states. And where have I told you where that is? The administrative, the world fact book from the CIA admit, acknowledges that there's 50 U.S. states but they're administrative divisions of the federal government. Divisions like what, military? Divisions, districts, folks. This is where all the people get freaked out on 
1871 law. It's all corporate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's worse than that. It's districts. And I believe, because it never was ended, you're still living in military districts. And I told you, since I've looked at it that way and approached this, all of this, that through that view, things have gotten a whole lot different and better for me on addressing this stuff. I don't get wild. I don't go tell it anybody about this. This is just what the perception I use to do the analysis. What 50 states? A dumb one in me has to know, what 50 states are you talking about? Is it kind of like those 57 states that Obama said? Well, I'm going to tell you, yeah, because you're just going to add the 50 states and what? We have American Samoa, 1, Guam, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, which means I'm missing one. And I don't remember which one that is, but I have 56 right there. 50 states. It doesn't say 50 states of the United of the United States of America, and it doesn't say 50 states of the states of the Union. And you think I'm making semantic. Well, okay, let's go look at some other spots, and we're going to find out within a context of definitions. They do specify distinctions, which is your support. This is not just some off-the-wall type thing. I didn't make these statements. I didn't point to different places. If it was only one, why isn't there one definition? It's like the word person. A few years, a decade ago, I did a research on one state. There was 128 different definitions to the word person. How can that be one thing? It's not. And you have to understand it in context of the statute, as they tell you. And so this means the 50 states. I'm asking, the dumb one to me says, what 50 states? Which ones? Is it the administrative states? Which federal administrative states, like the CIA says? Or is this the states of the union? And so, it's not really defined. The state's not defined. What we do see is territories. Is your state a territory? Again, the dumb one in me asked, is your state a territory? So let's go back. And the United States has the same meaning in the CDC thing uh, as state and territory, which is not defined. We have to go back to the United States, and it, it says the 50 states. Which 50 states? I have a clue. What I do see is a question. Not that I'm asking. The question is, it's supposed to be clear in the law, and there, and I would say then opt for the interpretation that I would make through and for the limited form government, which would limit this whole thing to the district of what in Washington. All right, the district Washington, the district of Washington, there, Washington D.C., and so that's the hub. Right, And so we're looking at 50 administrative states. Did you know you had an administrative state that you could be subject? Or are you going to make a status that says, that show by your, your record or whatever you make, that there's this distinction and you're not there? And I would say that that's what you want to do. And uh, as I'm looking through here, I'm noticing all my highlights have just gone away. Not just, they probably did it a, 10 minutes ago before I got here. But I'm going to have to make this up a little bit. And I didn't want to make it up too much. Let me see what happened here. I got no highlights to all the points I was going to make information for. And so I don't have them. And so I'm stuck. And let's look right here. Based on increased, uh, so this is a background. I'm just going to kind of wing this here, folks. Sorry, I don't know what happened. This is a background to this authority that they says you're going to have to have these certain tests. You're going to have to prove that you don't are, are negative, or you're going to have to prove you got it and are negative. In other words, if you don't prove, they don't believe you're healthy or immune. And yet, as we found out, they don't have transmissibility studies that are accurate, if at all. They don't have susceptibility studies at all. As I told you, it was going to be critical. But here is the background is based on increased transmissibility and spread of these new variants of SARS-CoV-2, CoV-2, and to reduce introduction and spread of these and future SARS-CoV-2 variants into the United States, expanding current UK pre-departure testing requirements to all foreign countries in the U.S. bound passengers is warranted. And so you see, in some regard, they have an authority to look at the threat, but they say transmiss, increased transmissibility. First of all, SARS-CoV-2, they have no test for. That's a fraud. They can't test for transmissibility. That statement's a fraud, but that's the background they're using. So if you don't start looking at this, as I've been saying, 
and anything else actually this government's come at you with anymore. And you break it down like I'm showing you that you have to. These you will be just absorbed. You'll be subsumed. You'll be mistreated because you don't have. You have a different view, and you're deemed uh, not just having. You're not deemed just a. You'll be you'll be deemed here because of the nature of this this communicable disease. You'll be deemed to be that terrorist that wants to inflict the nation. You're just not some guy on the street or gal on the street with a cold. So anticipate how this actually starts to work. So the background is that they base this on transmissibility. This is a fraud. SARS-CoV-2, a fraud. They just make the assertion. There is no test, and yet they assert the test you have to have is this one. And so they ask you to commit a fraud and be party to a fraud in taking the test in order to, to afford you the right to travel internationally. Now, granted, this is not looking internally, but all the aircraft companies are getting on board. They're all doing their, 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 their COVID, COVID pass stuff, and they're making it a natural process for you. And so this is going to be just absorbed into the system as they perfect it externally. Free departure testing may detect in, may detect travelers infected with SARS-CoV-2 before they initiate their travel. Free departure testing won't because they're using the PCR. It may detect it. What they're saying is that it may not. And so here you are. You the reason why they want you to get your test three one to three days before is to ensure that when you get there, they won't have to tell you no. And we know they can make it up when you get there, because all they have to do is do the, new, do the old standard, and they can show you positive, and if they do the new standard, they can show you negative. And so they can condition your action. You've now missed your flight because you tested positive, and you didn't quarantine, and you don't have your doctor's release note, you little kids, you little goats. And so you watch and you read in these these rules as they built this up, and you start to see, and this is what starts to become the ominous part for me, they create a fairy tale that they've put you in the, it's the Chinese finger cuffs. You cannot get out by resisting. You have to show that the cuffs aren't really there, as I've been saying. And the way you have to do it is piece this apart. Here's another paragraph. And I'm working hard to try and find what I thought was important, as I don't have my highlights anymore. Pre-departure testing may uh, detect travelers infected with SARS-CoV-2 because they want you to be making sure you go to your doctor to get tested or some facility to test. Why? Because they want to get your DNA or they want to inject you with particles or whatever you see. We don't know. We certainly want to see that they want you inside the system because once you test... You also have to agree to post-departure uh, surveillance. If you read through this, you'll see them setting up that system. Once you test, it's over. And they won't let you go. And it's not even you. What they're doing is saying, if you don't test, then we're going to go get that airline that's going to allow you on board. And that airline's the one that's going to keep you off because they're mandated in order to do something. And I told you this third-party imposition was coming, and it's going to be like oh, very difficult to deal with. But if you start, I think, with identifying the fraud, then they're just co-conspirators to a fraud, and I, that doesn't get you on your destination internationally. But this is the point about starting early and getting your, your documents together, that you might be able to, to stop it. But they're claiming you go on that uh, CDC modeling indicates that pre-departure testing is most effective when combined with self-monitoring. In other words, it's not enough. It's not enough just to get your vaccinations and your tests and your negative. You're going to have to be always underneath this if you want to go anywhere. And again, internationally, I don't want to dismiss the fact that that's happening, going to happen here on all your public transportation. I think we have a report coming on that. Persons for persons previously diagnosed with COVID-19 who remain asymptomatic after recovery, CDC does not recommend retesting within three months after the date of symptom onset or the date of the first positive viral diagnostic test if their infection was asymptomatic. In other words, you were positive with a health, was healthy, meant that their test, that's showing you that it does throw false positives. 
Asymptomatic means healthy. And they're agreeing as a background that this is something that they're saying, well, don't test again, but it's still part of the problem that we're surveilling and subject to our review for the initial SARS-CoV-2 infection, which they can never find yet, don't have an isolate for, don't have the procedures within, and just presume upon you. Notice in this paragraph, they start with the symptoms. The mere symptoms are what cause you to be non-symptomatic. But then they refer to an initial SARS-CoV-2 infection that never has been shown to exist. Complete fraud. They'll give you a report, footnote 12. You can go read it. I didn't go read it. Just go look at their information. If you know what you're reading for, it all ends up being fraud. You can't just say fraud. You have to delineate how it's the fraud. Pre-departure testing does not eliminate all risks. So, they're, again, they set you up for all those impositions that they've been doing, and they're building an authority. This background builds the authority for the one who's going to come and sign away everything that they have the right to do to control and restrain your liberty because of this myth, because of this this fraud. I don't even know. I have no words anymore. It's just um, I don't know what to say. I don't even want to lead people. You just got to go read the stuff for yourself, and you have to have the words in your mouth because one day you may be by yourself, and you're going to have to be able to say these things. One last paragraph. We're going to get to the authority here they claim. And remember, this is a federal authority for 50 states I don't know about, uh, and I haven't been defined by the uh, by the rules, which allows you to, they will tell you that you're semantically nuts, but I can, I'll can i show you here in another document, I believe here, how you have three or four different references that showed that you're not, and as we get to this, you're going to find out your local authority's opinion is important, even the opinion. It's supposed to be a determination, the findings, but we'll get to that. This next paragraph here coming and leading into the authority to do, the one who's going to presume you guilty, presume you to be a passer of communicable disease, of contagion, as cases of COVID-19 continue, is not stating as cases of SARS-CoV-2 continue, does it? No. They're not. That's not this. This is just the cover. As cases of COVID-19 continue to rise across the globe and travel volume increases, routine pre-departure testing for all U.S.-bound aircraft passengers is needed not only to reduce the introduction of the two known SARS-CoV-2 variants from U.K. and RSA, but also future variants that might be more transmissible might be more transmissible and cause more severe illness. Again, might be, they don't know, they can't know, they're dealing with a fraud, and future variants is what they have claimed would be endless emerging diseases. What it really is, is the seasonal flu variant variants mutating as it normally does. Remember, they, they've dropped the word novel here a long time ago. Now, action. Based on this background, you see the action. For these reasons, I, whoever this bureaucrat is, bureaucrat is I hereby determine and boy, you know, this should leave you with a bad taste in your mouth if you haven't seen this level of detail done, even fraudulently so, by your local administrator, just accepting the word of China and the governor, the pandemic and the WHO, not the rock group or the owl, but the WHO, World Health Organization says it exists just because they say. At any rate, you see no detail at all, but here at least we got the detail as fraudulent as it is. For these reasons, now here's reasons, if they're fraudulent, they're not. You, that's the point about you being versed and in, in, in educated in this to be able to be have the knowledge and then the application in order to protect yourself. You're not going to do it in the day. You, well, you might try. You might be able to do this in the day. You have the right documentation to show that this this is an invalid order as against you. But if you've got to be somewhere uh, outside, then maybe that's not so good. And then you're also dealing with the other country which has need, may have hardly any of the kind of rights you have from the United States of gov- of, in the United States and your right to travel. Anyway, 
For these reasons, I hereby determine that passengers covered by, by this order are at risk of transmitting the new SARS-CoV-2 virus variants or other potential variants, and that requiring such passengers to demonstrate either a negative COVID-19 test results or recovery from COVID-19 after previous SARS-CoV-2 infection is needed as a public health measure to protect the health of fellow travelers and U.S. communities. U.S. communities. That's the key right there. Well, let's go back a little bit. Public health measure to protect the health of, follow, of fellow uh, travelers. And they then impose upon you that health is not within their purview. That if you're healthy, you are going to be discriminated against. You will have to have a test. You will have to prove you got this thing. In other words, you have to prove you got the synthetic mRNA in order to travel. That you are one of them. You are one of the hive. You are one of the Borg. And I didn't bring it up and I didn't. Maybe I'll do this next week. There's a, 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 there's a, a cordyceps mushroom, which I've been fascinated by. It's a parasitic fungus that invades an insect takes over the insect and then it out pop out the head pops a mushroom like you see a little uh, spore transmitting device pair on the and it tell it this when this thing gets in it the bug that it infects goes to a branch gets up to the highest part of the branching crawl and dies right there to allow this spore to be this uh, this fruiting body to come out to spread the spores around to the next insect is I think what we're dealing with with this mRNA it comes in and it and fungus, not a fungal infection, but it works synthetically to perform the same function to control you. You're completely, the, the caterpillar has to, will only climb up once it gets affected and it'll do what it's told. But anyway, getting back to this, you have to be sick and be cured. You have to test negative and that's not good enough. And if you can start to see the type of totalitarian control they build into a, from a fraud, you may start to appreciate why, it, to, I guess for me, it's becoming so much more ominous what we are up against that I don't hear really many people understanding. Yeah, there's a complaint that it's no good. Yeah, I get all that. But, but really, is anybody really mentioning how you're going to respond? I don't know that people are. And let's get to that community thing. And, and it's, it's to your right into your own life. What I did have highlighted and I don't find is that the standard has to do with the decision made by local health officials. And this is where, to me, when I look at this, that we have an opportunity to have a proof of what the local official says. Because remember, your local official is really the exclusive authority over these communicable diseases. Now, they talk about a cooperating or local public health authority. What the underlying, underpinning to this, and I can't find, I'm trying to look real, real quick, I'm hesitating here. I want to find the statement. You have to read the words. Let me see if I find it here. Including but not limited to observing precautions during travel providing consent to post-arrival testing. See, there's the post. Once you get involved, you're going to be surveilled forever, essentially. And or, we'll hear it maybe if I get there in a future tab, seven years from now, if you don't think they're not messing around. And or self-quarantine after arrival in the United States, as may be directed by federal, state, territorial, tribal, or local public health authorities to reduce the risk of transmission of spread. I think I found what I was looking for. Happened to be the last line right before the background. Did you hear the out, if you will? Did you hear the thing you can assert? That they are, as a matter directed by federal, state, territorial, tribal, or local public health authorities to reduce the risk of transmission or spread. Forget the question of transmission or spread. They try to throw this federal, state, territorial, tribal, or, or local public health official like all of them have equal authority. 
In actuality, public health officials in the state, your county, have the authority. And your state legislatures have made the determination of what the delegation of the power that they can invoke for quarantine has a purpose, a standard they have to meet, which I've been asking you to go focus on. You're going to need to see that. When you can show by your letter that the local health authority had no authority over you, there is no threat to re a risk to reduce in you, you may be able to have a record to begin to show right here that the order does not work on you, notwithstanding what it says about asymptomatic, non-testing, healthy people. And that be based on the fact, so you get your letter and it doesn't come back that they've, and an additional question I just remembered, you might want to, you might consider asking, and this is just on top of my head, as it just occurred to me coming on, I really do think about this a lot, it really bothers me, how do we respond? The thought coming to the broadcast was, maybe include that, whether or not there's a record that you, there was a medical report filed on you in their file. Why? Because if those of you that done the research, you know why I said that. Because that's the first step in, that instigate, that starts their ability to have jurisdiction. And if there's no name with your medical report, with your name on it, that for you, they have not declared that you have a thing to transmit. Your local, by that, and the failure to produce the other things in the statute, the local decision is fulfilled, and you are in compliance, and you are, that's what their determination is relative to this condition about quarantining and those types of suggestions. Your local officials have declared that you're not a subject that can transmit because they never had the report that you were. In other words, the health official locally overrides what they've done. You likely will never get this decided while you're standing there talking to some stupid cop, some stupid TSA agent, or whomever. So this might be something you want to set up before. But this is the same thing you're going to be doing locally. And why I've said it a, a year ago, folks, how much can, how much do I see that I can anticipate this stuff that far ahead and it's coming relevant? That they are providing consent to post arrival, again, again uh, after arrival, as may be directed by, let's jump to the end result, the extreme authority, which is the last one here, as may be directed by your local health authority. You have a letter that says the, the direction was nothing that you had to be subject to. You're not an object, a subject of quarantine. Notwithstanding what this federal rule says, and therefore you're now, that federal rule is not compliant with the law and the supremacy of the state regarding communicable disease. There's a, the CDC's is just a suggestion. Anyway, without too many more words, the look, you get your letter, you ask whether or not there's a medical report made for you, I think, as it comes to my mind here today, so that you have a written letter that they said no. And then the other question is whether or not they've fulfilled the rest, and to identify that there was a SARS-CoV-2, then you get to the fraud of this. If there's no SARS-CoV-2 identified and there can't be, you've got to the fraud of this paperwork. And this paper, this order, becomes essentially ir irrelevant to authority. And then it becomes a matter of whether or not the air airline is going to honor the fraud or the law. And I don't know where that goes, but at least you have something that you can present, that you can define, that you can roll out. Let me go quickly here. So I was getting back over to the, what's the United States. And we've, the, it's a district, Washington, D.C., but it has these definitions. And I just said that the local state, your local, does your state authority, supposed, is not one of those state, those administrative states. And it is by definition, because of its exclusive power for in the communicable disease arena, divesting the federal of any authority, actually, except for a couple rules we found, but that, those can be those can be uh, destroyed because they weren't fulfilling the legislative mandate to local determination. We want to know what this America, this United States, is, and. Uh, 
it's not, you know, say, well, we know what the United States is. Well, there's a lot of different terms about the United States. And here's one of them. If we go to the agricultural title, we think it's just the United States. They have the word United States. What's the definition? And what's it pertain to? In the Agricultural Code of Title Seven, it says the term United States, same word, same two words, United States, means the 50 states. Oh, you say, there it is, the 50 states. Well, there's more to read on this definition than you found on the other one, which stopped a comma after 50 states and went into the territories and possessions. The term United States underneath Title Seven means the 50 states of the United States of America. Well, what the heck is that? The United States and the United States of America are different and distinct. Here's your first clue that the term United States underneath the code, the for, Title 42 Municipal Code of the Federal Government, Title 42, where your civil rights are, those exactions to pay of every kind, eh, and no other, those extortions, well, there's the United States of America out there, and there's 50 states of that. It's not listed underneath the CDC CFR. And so we now have an incongruity. Another term. It doesn't end. In Title Seven. it's talking about stuff of, and you have to understand, we're talking about stuff of commodity and produce and product and the ground and where it's at and all this other stuff. So there's a different kind of thing going on here, which is why we get to see this. Next the definition, I'll have a link for this that I don't have, I didn't send out, I just got this morning as it occurred to me. The United States and this country, the term United States and the term this country, together in Title Seven, means the United States of America. It's territories and possessions and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. Well, the United States of America has ter territories and possessions. Is that the United States? Interesting. It has to have United States and this country. The country is the United States of America because the territories, as we found in the other title, is the United States. And so right here I can now parse the United States without the country is the territories. The United States with this country, the term this country attached, means the United States of America. Together, the word and in that definition, the terms United States and this country means the and conjunctive together found means the territories and the United States of America, not just the United States, which is what? The district. All right, so you start to parse this out, and you look at that CDC order, and it's got a particular thing it's talking about. And it tries to get you to believe the 50 states they're talking about are the 50 states of the United States of America. What it actually is, I believe, and I think I've, I've shown it because of the administrative districting, the administrative territory, if you will, that the United States and the 50 states has nothing to do with the United States, but it's the administrative federal districts overlying the states that I think the Buck Act has been identified to have done for you. There's a veneer. Again, the, sped, the false front spaghetti western that you see as you look on also is a veneer that's laying right underneath your feet that's that insulates you from where you want to be, which is the, the land itself, and where the patents and stuff lie relative to land disposal and getting back to that, that proof that uh, says that you have a right to travel because of the land, the road use, the land use, not the veneer of commercial inter interference that they put. So we have another one. United States of America shows up. And so I guess... The point here, if we go through this list, you'll, you'll get the, the link later. You read through it yourself. Try to make sense of this a bit, because it's important to see there's another definition that the United States means the 50 states of the United States, the, the District of Columbia Commonwealth. Well, the 50 states is not 5-0 in this case. It's spelled out 50 more properly, but it doesn't show you the United States of America where it includes the 50 states, which I believe is the administrative states, which is the CAA tells you exists. The state, the types of state are different. Everything has a state, and this is a condition. But where it is, is totally, potentially, well, it is different because the terms are different. And it's not semantical when you start to see how it applies. And then we have this little thing of telling you it's on the ground. You have this sense uh, as well, it's spoken to. The term United States, the term, the two words, 
except as otherwise specifically herein provided, when used in a geographical sense, means the con continental United States, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Virgin Islands of the United States. And so they define what this is, but it's different to this country when you define it all in a geographical sense. So that you have to ask, well, what other senses are they are there? And this is the silent trick. They talk in the United States in different senses. Not census, not senseless. S E N S E. It's a sense. Alright? It's a definable thing. And if you don't know what where this is speaking to, you miss I call it the trick. You miss how they're getting you to think like you know what you're talking about or what they're talking about. In fact, when you look closer, maybe not so much. Uh, another thing you'll see in this link I'll send in the sub subsection in this subsection now in Title Ten. This is I think the military section. The term United States, when used in its geographical sense, includes the territories and possessions of the United States. In its geographical sense, it has nothing to do with America. In its geographical sense. Isn't that interesting? And so you start looking at these conundrums that are built into this, and you start, well, where is this place? What is the United States? What I can tell you is that there's an acknowledgement by the CIA that says that there's administrative districts called states. Obama said there's 57 states. I can count five, uh, 56 right here without looking real close. And so those are administrative states, but there are the states of the United States. And my friend, the, the one I was just talking with here, talking to you about, uh, he he was telling me that he just realized that they've taken out the phrase the union of of states in the, the code. So they're extracting the knowledge that shows that there's a distinction, and they bury them inside these definitions, and they make them all convoluted, it seems, until you slow up and you start to understand really how to parse the language. Certain of these definitions do not refer to the United States of America, for which a constitution was created to make those states in the Union. The federal government speaks only through its jurisdiction, and I had to learn this, I told you, as a joke to me, my own joke, read two and a half times through the Motor Vehicle Code. It's like a small Bible when you get it in the printed form. Two and a half times through, halfway through, I figured out, what am I reading for my right to travel in a book that's for regulating a thing I don't do? In a place, I don't do it. And that's when the light came on. And I just gave you the light you should have come on on your own by you going through that r ridiculous exercise two and a half times, read your local book until it finally dawns on you what you're looking at. And what might you not find there if you're looking in the wrong place and thinking it's there anyway, when you think you're too smart. My right's going to be here, so I have a right to drive. No, you don't. You don't have a clue. It's not discussed that way, If the way you think it is. It's not discussed that way. So moving in here to show you the prevalence of this, where it pertains, you start throwing in, I'm only saying parts of what I can say. I don't have the time. Uh, I can just barely skip over the surface of this. I'm hoping you get an insight of how all this starts to, what you're looking for, how what I, look, what I look for to try and keep sense of where it is. Again, the discussion of where is an Article Three court? And it's in the statute, the same statute everyone condemns in the 1871 law. If you look carefully, I told you you got to do a study, and some of you have, and thank you again. I can't appreciate that enough. It took the time. It takes about three or four days, now that I've told you a couple tricks, to find that. Where is the United States of America relative to the Article Three courts? You think it's everywhere. Maybe it's nowhere. Well, maybe you should do the research. But this is, where does this extend? How does it go? Well, this is in commerce. This is international. We've got to be cognizant of that. But the airlines are domestic or they are functioning corporations. And they're going to do and they're going to be threatened with their, again, they're, they're kind of on the receiving end of the threat. So I uh, would be soft on this. The third party liability is terrible in this one on how to deal with it. But American Airlines expands use of immunity passports on international flights. Because of that code, they're already working there. They've already been ahead of us. They're already doing this. And I suggest this will happen in the transportation sector as they start to lock in the domestic terrorists and those that are not wanting to be this, understand the status quo.
we have been wa warning about the likelihood of that immunity passports would soon become ubiquitous on international and maybe even domestic flights as ever air travelers appreciate the allure of a simple st simply storing one's covid test or vaccination test on the smartphone app had become almost too simple to pass up. China started using smartphones to track individual COVID status almost immediately after the pandemic went transnational, allowing even the residents of Wuhan to party like it's 2019 for a big junk last big chunk last week uh, last year. So again, enough talking. It's now being moved under pressure of this re invalid regulation as your local officials have determined that the letter that you need to write to get that for you, we're back down to the why the habeas is so important, to ha start building your, your papers will be these legal answers from the officials. So they're your, your official answer to you that under the law, you're not to be treated like somebody that needs to have COVID. And that would be the institution of the trans, uh, of the vector, wouldn't it? So you, you, that's wrong too. But it, the COVID passes here; it's already in the works. A pandemic could continue for seven years under current vaccination rate. Yep, it's an endless, folks. Endless. They're just giving you notice. I don't even know what to say. I just read the titles. I tell you, I've already talked about all this. I've set it all up for you. I've told you where the legislation was going to come. Here we are today. I just can't get beyond the crickets. I really have a problem. A federal register notice requirement for proof of negative COVID test re result or recovery from COVID-19 for an uh, airline passenger arriving into the United States uh, United States was a notice by the CDC. I don't. I didn't even look yet to see if this is ongoing. It's about quarantine. Again, the federal has no quarantine rights uh, to be giving advice, and then is it quarantine if they're making up? That, you, that you're a vector when you're not. See, that has to be scrutinized at the federal level. They're saying this is a um, an administrative order. You have the right to jump in on this and make a comment, like I told you we did at Jefferson Mining District uh, for, what, the year before when the government was actually trying to come in and do stuff and take away our property. We were sitting there to say, no, you, you can't do it that way. Here's the law. And I tell you, we were able to back off quite a few things and they literally had to go a different end around, and they used the Republican Democratic Party to destroy the country by stealing more land from you. People don't appreciate that, but this is all part of it. As we go, COVID-19 in your health, the CDC, lots of information I have for you, talking about these orders and things and explaining to you how it's coming down. And this is where I started to feel a bit of an oppression. How they're doing it to you is the presumption that they have the authority, and they will determine for you, even in your innocence, that you are subject and we find that they impose that you have to have the SARS-CoV-2. If they actually get it down to DNA testing, you're going to have to have that MNRA. That's where the sending works. And we see now over 500 deaths now following mRNA experimental injections under, quote, back with creating vaccine hesitancy increasing. What do you think, folks? So the, the CDC's own information tells you that it's, it's a killer. This thing is a killer. And if you want to know more uh, more scary stuff, but it's actually accurate, uh, more references, the coronavirus and vaccination crime, one of the most important videos of our time. I have to spend, uh, pass this on for brand new tube. Uh, you'll get a link for that. You need to listen to it. I only had the time to read about, listen to about half, uh, but it's information. It pulls together everything I've been suggesting, but it gives you an even more in-depth thing. You need to see what this thing is. It's, mRNA is not a vaccine. It's not at all. It's a medical tyranny. CDC announces all travelers must wear two masks, uh, threatens arrest. As I keep telling you, your private uh, freedom is, is at risk if you don't have at least uh, the paperwork for you. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Thank you for all your donations today and coming for a whole month now, folks, one time a year. And all you all that, that do uh, syndicate the broadcast, I do appreciate that. Get the word out. Sorry I have to go so quick here all the time, but... We're imperiled a bit. I hope we can respond. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 